everyone, I am holding my big boy palette here, which uh, I, I'm actually contemplating to take out this middle part to make things a bit more simpler to handle. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to play around with two color wheels. This is the Van Gogh Impressionism palette and we also looked at his earlier palette which had quite different colors and that's the color wheel that we created. Now interestingly enough the two colors from this color wheel and the color palette he kept those two colors in the new uh, Impressionism palette, the updated palette. The Prussian blue and the vermilion. So I will keep those two colors but for the yellow as you remember we didn't have here anything bright or vivid to play with so we got quite muted uh, mixes here. Now what I want to do is I want for one of the color wheels, we'll probably start with it, um, update that yellow for this chromium yellow hue deep which was supposed to be a chrome yellow um, on his palette and see how um, large of a difference, how big of a difference it makes when it comes to the secondary mixes. Also I have swapped my White Knight's Vermilion Hue for the Schmincke's Cadmium Red Light. Uh, so it's a little bit redder, so this is more orangey, but it's very kind of similar in, in terms of the end result. Um, so that's what we will do for the first one. And for the second one, we'll go for the more modern bright colors. So I'm going to pick um, the Cadmium Yellow Light, which re should represent his Zinc Yellow. And then I would pick one of the pinks, possibly the permanent Carmine, which was supposed to be um, Carmine on his palette. And for a blue, I'm thinking to go for either Ultramarine Finest or Cobalt Blue, which in his um, case would have been French Ultramarine or Cobalt Blue. But I'll decide that right um, when I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm going to pop the uh, palette right here. And we will start with the yellow first. I think I'm going to mix my colors in this little plate here, which I made myself. I really enjoyed making little um, mixing plates. And... Let's see, so for the yellow, that was the Chromium Yellow Hue Deep, oh, which would be this one here. So this color. Uh, I think I didn't do actually middle circles, I just realized. Yeah, I should have done that. Anyway, so let me just finish the swatch. I'm so sorry. I just realized it was completely off view. So to do the circle in there, I'm going to use my uh, compass. I don't know why these things are called compass. Compass, in my mind, is the southwest thing. Anyway, so I'm going to go right in the middle and then roughly, I think, roughly about here is where I want. Nope, I need to go a bit lower. Okay, let's do it here. That's it. And then we need obviously another one. So we're going to be playing with the light and the dark here. And I'll do the same in this area. And Oh, 
I love how quick and easy it is to do that yourself. And just erase this line here. Shouldn't be doing it when the paint is wet. But anyway. So this one is the Mono Zero Elastoma Eraser, if you wonder. And the size is ultra fine, 2.3 millimeters. So I'm just going to go with my brush and just bring the line slightly more down. So it's more coherent with the other swatches. Okay, right. Then let's do our red cadmium light, which is this color right here. Cadmiums tend to have opacity to them in watercolor anyway. Obviously his palette, I have to remind uh, myself that his palette was oil paints and I have no experience with oil paints so I wouldn't know. I just wanted to see, you know, color is color, whether you translate it into another medium or not, it's still the color. So I just wanted to see what they're going to look like, these colors from his palette of the Impressionism area, um, era rather, two watercolors. Okay, if I don't make much sense, it's because I have a headache. <laughs> That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Okay, blue we already agreed is going to be Prussian blue, so I'm back to that Prussian blue. What a difference a color mix can make Especially if you just look at one color, this is a very great exercise of exploring your colors. So for instance, if you wanted to create a palette with three colors, um, and then swap one of them and see how things change. That's also a good thing to do, rather than just um, completely change all three colors. You could do minor tweaks to the palette, that makes sense. Okay, so here's our Prussian blue, so we'll leave it at that. And I'm going to start mixing now, so let's see what happens. We're going to load a bit of Prussian blue. Into the chromium yellow hue deep. Oh, that's a really bright green. Very juicy. We'll see a comparison later once these dry. While I'm still at this mix, I'm also going to add a bit of white and create a pastel mix because we know that in this palette, if you haven't seen the previous video, I'll try to link it up here for you in that corner up here and um, <clears throat> you can see all of the colors that were in his palette all 14 and two of them were white so I'm going to for um, convenience purpose use my Ecoline liquid watercolor these are dye based not pigment based as these watercolors are obviously um, but it is so easy to get a bit of white from the pipette and you only need a tiny bit because it goes a long long way so there we go you can see immediately we get a very pastel color so that would be our white mix There we go. 
All right, next mix, I will try to attempt the orange one. So let me just clean up the palette real quick. And I'm ready to go for the next one. Okay. So, back to Chromium Yellow Hue Deep. It's a beautiful color. And then we have the Cadmium Red Light. Don't know how much of it I need. Yeah, it's quite strong. So I'm going to go back into the yellow for a more orange mix. It is snowing outside, by the way. It's really, really pretty. I am tempted to go for a little walk, although it's freezing cold. Okay, so here is our orange. So it makes a beautiful orange. It would be hard to get this of a vibrant orange with a muted yellow. And then, while I still have this mix here, I'm just going to add a bit of white. Just a little drop. Into this orange. And that makes the most delicious peach color. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? So that will go here. If you're wondering what this inner circle will be filled with, I'm going to mix these colors with Van Dyke Brown because as we mentioned in the previous episode, um, Van Gogh swapped his black for Van Dyke Brown to create um, darker mixes, but not as sort of muddy um, and gloomy looking as they would be mixed with the black from his previous palette. So then we have the blue with the red. Let's mix that. Tiny bit of red because it's quite strong just to see what happens to begin with, whether we need to add more. So I need more is in the pigment and then I'll start diluting it going back into the blue again. I just had too much water in my brush. So it's a bit difficult to get a nice purple so I've got some sort of this mix which is kind of almost like a neutralized almost like an indigo. If I go with the red it goes hmm yeah, it's difficult to create a purple with these two colors. It goes, so if I add more of the red, it starts to look a bit like brownish. If I go too much in the blue, it starts to neutralize to like a gray or um, indigo. So, but mind you, I do like this color. I do like what I see here. It's an interesting color. Okay, let's a touch. Uh, let's add a touch of white into this. Like that. See what happens. Yeah, you definitely pull out some sort of interesting grayish purple. Okay, 
That's quite pretty actually. It's like a sky, grey sky on a rainy day type of a colour. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the whites with the primaries. So I'm going to go back into the yellow. Don't need that much, it's just one mix. A bit of white. That's a pretty white, um, yellow. I call these colors the um, white mixes. They call them ice cream colors. They really are pretty. They remind me of this little Italian ice cream shop in Hampstead where I used to live in London. Um, and literally all of the ice creams were super delicious. They had this like mango and blackcurrant and whatnot and the colors were exactly like that. Um, right, then we have cadmium, what is it? Cadmium red light again. I'll just clean up mine because I had a bit of blue in there. Like that, and again a bit of white. What a pretty pink it makes. Okay, and finally onto the blue. Okay. And a touch of white. So that's the whites. Now we're going to do the same thing um, and mixing a bit of Van Dyke brown. I think I will speed up that part of the video because I don't want it to be too long. And then we'll compare this color palette, which already is quite a bit lifted and a lot more brighter, even though it's just one color has been replaced technically. Uh, we'll compare it to the previous one. Okay.
Okay, so the color wheel is almost dry. It has a few bits there that are still drying, but that won't prevent us from looking at the previous color wheel, just in a quick comparison. So are you ready? Here we go. So you can see the difference um, of the color wheels and that there is a significant lift in color, yet it is definitely not screaming of bright colors, which I think we'll explore in the next color wheel by picking other yellows, reds and blues, and you'll see the difference there. But it's definitely already a step up in terms of color from the previous one. So just changing that Schmincke yellow ochre uh, for the chromium yellow hue deep, we have um, basically gone into a slightly more colorful, brighter palette. And the other thing to notice would be the middle colors. I find them quite interesting. Even when I was mixing them, I felt that using Van Dyke Brown instead of the ivory black created a more luminous and more transparent mixes. And also it was in a, in a way a nice way of neutralizing and creating new colors. The colors still would like to use, whereas with the blacks, um, I didn't really like it. I think if I had maybe Mars Black instead of this one, it would be more interesting for me because I know then it would granulate and separate and do all of that stuff and it would be less for the blackness of the actual color, but it would be, or the opacity of it, it would be more for the granulation, so that would be something there but here I definitely enjoyed it more. So for the next one I have now picked already the three colors. So we're going to do Cadmium Yellow Light, which was supposed to be Zinc Yellow in Van Gogh's palette. Then I'm going to use Permanent Carmine, which is this one here, and that would have been the um, Carmine color in his. And finally for the blue I'm going for the Ultramarine Finest, which would have been just French Ultramarine in Van Gogh's palette. Okay, so I'm expecting here quite a bit of a uh, bit more of color. I'm just going to go swap my water because having done all of those mixes, you can see the colors are quite muddy because we used all three. Also, by the way, this color here I forgot to say uh, when I mixed the Prussian blue carmine red light and added some of the Van Dyke or the sepia brown in my case. It kind of created a black here, a color that is very close to black, or maybe slightly like a softer black. And so that would have been his way of creating blacks. Or what I read as well, he would use one of the blues with the sepia brown, Van Dyke brown in his case, um, and create a black. 